Medicosis Perfectionalis once again with a new topic and today let's talk about hairy cell leukemia. How do you like this hairy guy? I love him. good old days hairy cell leukemia used to be known as different things such as histiocytic leukemia, malignant reticulosis, lymphoid myelofibrosis, leukemic reticuloendotheliosis. Wow this is crazy. Of course I love hairy cell leukemia better. It's a description that the leukemia will have hairy cells on peripheral smear. Give me a break, leukemic reticuloendotheliosis? What the hell does that mean? If your book still have any of these names, there is no hope for you. You're living under a rock, literally. So before we talk more about hairy cell leukemia, let me remind you of my challenge. I need your help to reach 25,000 subscribers. Once I hit that goal, we can start a new series, I know. Hematology and oncology can be boring. So please consider sharing my videos. It really helps me. Okay, hairy cell leukemia. Rare type of leukemia. It's indolent, which means subtle. This is opposite to aggressive. Some texts recognize it as a subtype of CLL. Also, hairy cell leukemia can be accompanied by some components of lymphoma, specifically non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So again, this is an example of both leukemia and lymphoma in the same patient. What else? We had CLL together with SLL, small lymphocytic lymphoma, as an example of leukemia and lymphoma in the same patient. Again, think lemon and lemonade as I've told you before. We have the BRAF V600E mutation, CD11C positive, and we have overexpression of cyclin D1. What are the hairy cells? Hairy cells are mature B lymphocytes. Okay, what is the demographics? Middle-aged Caucasian male is usually the patient of hairy cell leukemia. Leukemic cells will accumulate in the spleen, leading to splenomegaly, leading to early satiety and abdominal discomfort. Leukemic cells will crowd out other cell lines such as red blood cells leading to symptoms of anemia, white blood cells leading to symptoms of leukopenia and platelets leading to symptoms of thrombocytopenia. Notice here that the hairy cells are mature that's why we consider it as a subtype of CLL which is a mature chronic leukemia. There are some theories that hairy cell leukemia is linked to farming and gardening activity. Also, sometimes patients with high tumor burden of hairy cell leukemia may have low cholesterol level in their blood. So, here is a fun way for it. If you'd like to have low cholesterol levels in your blood, go do some gardening. Of course, this is a joke. What is the pathophysiology of hairy cell leukemia? These hairy cells, which are B lymphocytes, will accumulate in the bone marrow. Also, reticular fibrosis will occur in the bone marrow, reticulin fibers. This will lead to cytopenia. Also, the spleen will undergo something called splenic sequestration and marginalization, attacking and destroying blood cells, leading to, again, cytopenia. In the lymph nodes, we find B cells in the cortex and T cells in the paracortex. In the spleen, we find both B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes in the white pulp of the spleen. First, the blood enters the white pulp. Then you have the lymphocytes to attack the invaders to the spleen. B lymphocytes are particularly present in the peripheral areas of the white pulp. T lymphocytes is present in the periarteriolar lymphatic sheath or PALS. Now, let's go to hairy cell leukemia. Something weird happened. 
and instead of seeing the B lymphocytes in the white pulp, we see these abnormal neoplastic B lymphocytes called the hairy cells in the red pulp. I don't know why is that, but this is the, just the way it is. Clinically, easy. Since the spleen is involved, you will have splenomegaly involving the red pulp. Spleen will lead to abdominal discomfort and early satiety. Hepatomegaly, of course, hepatosplenomegaly is common in hairy cell leukemia. Okay, crowding out of the normal population of blood cells will lead to cytopenia. You'll have symptoms of anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. There is cutaneous vasculitis in cases of hairy cell leukemia. This is high yield. Also, there is no lymphadenopathy in cases of hairy cell leukemia. I don't mean zero, but it's less than 10%. So when I've told you earlier in the lecture that hairy cell leukemia sometimes is associated with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, this is true, but rare, less than 10% of cases. Also in hairy cell leukemia, there is decrease of the humoral and cell-mediated immunity by the B and T lymphocytes respectively. We can never do hematology or oncology without going to the lab. So let's go to the lab. On peripheral smear, lymphocytes with cytoplasmic or hairy projections. They are short, tiny projections of the B lymphocyte. Let's go stain them with TRAP, tartrate resistant acid phosphatase. They stain positively to TRAP. This is sensitive but not specific. Okay, so it rules out but it doesn't rule in the disease. Okay, I need something specific now. Okay, let's go to immunohistochemistry, also known as flow cytometry, also known as immune phenotyping. You will have CD103 positive, CD11C positive, CD25 positive. Also, the B cell markers will be positive. Why? Because the hairy cells are B lymphocytes. So, CD19 positive, CD20 positive, CD22 positive. Annexin A1 is specific but not sensitive. Bone marrow aspiration, usually dry tap. It's very difficult to aspire this bone marrow. Why? bone marrow fibrosis. I've told you reticulin fibers accumulate in the bone marrow. If you are successful and can aspirate you'll find neoplastic cells and reticulin fibrosis in this bone marrow. Alright let's try to solve this vignette. 50 year old Caucasian male comes in complaining of dumb discomfort, early satiety as well as pallor and fatigue. On physical exam, there is splenomegaly. On peripheral smear, you find this kind of cell. Platelet count is 70,000. Attempt to perform bone marrow aspiration yields a dry tap. Question number one, what's the most likely diagnosis? Question number two, what's next? Look for the T922 translocation. Do a PAS stain do immune phenotyping or test for cryoglobulins. <laughs> Next question regarding the same case. Few weeks later and before any medical treatment or intervention, this patient's peripheral smear started showing these cells. I'll help you by telling you that all of them are abnormal red blood cells. The question is which of the following should you deduce? Is this a blast crisis? Is this leukostasis? Does that mean that neoplastic cells have invaded the spleen? Or is it an immune hemolytic anemia? So let me know the answer to these three questions down below in the comment section and let's see who will get it first. Now let's examine these old names and some of them will start to make sense. Histocytic leukemia, no this is wrong, it's not histocytic, it's lymphocytic leukemia. 
Hairy cell leukemia is malignant. Reticulosis, yes, it's a malignancy, that's true. Reticulosis, yes, it's a condition of reticulant fibers being in your bone marrow, called bone marrow fibrosis, that's why we get a dry tap. Lymphoid myelofibrosis, that's very good. Lymphoid, yes, it's a lymphoid leukemia. Myelofibrosis, meaning fibrosis of the bone marrow. Leukemic reticuloendotheliosis, yes, because the reticuloendothelial system includes the spleen, and you have splenomegaly with a leukemia. Also, don't forget that the liver is one of the reticuloendothelial organs, and in hairy cell leukemia you can get hepatomegaly. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Go to this website. You can support me by giving $1 a month. It will help me produce more videos, plus you will get early access to videos plus other notes. Thank you so much, and as always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.